the first misimpression was that bhakti is Hindu. <laughs> the first misimpression is that you're saying, don't, don't think this is Indian religion. He said, I have to say that a lot, you know, because people would look at devotees and say, oh, they're Hindus. They're from India. No, 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 no. The sun rises in the east. That doesn't make it an eastern sun. That was the explanation, the example he used. So that was the first misimpression of India that Prabhupada had to rectify. Then he had to rectify so many other misimpressions like, uh, well, uh, women are inferior. He said, when you read that sort of thing, that's a material distinction. He said, in Krishna consciousness, there's full equality. He had to rectify that misimpression. So, I mean, it, I would say that it was Prabhupada who created that impression by talking about in his purports and other places. I don't know whether he rectified it. Mm. Well, <laughs> that was part of the, that's part of the challenge that we're confronting today. Yeah. There's a, I, a lot I of discussion. What, saying that, uh, what I mean, what my understanding is that maybe his writings created that impression, but in his personal leanings, he rectified that impression. But I don't yeah, think this that, is, um, Yeah. You uh, and I have talked about this before. Yeah, we can talk about it separately. How do we, how do we deal with the controversial statements in Prabhupada's yes, books? Yes, that's true. <laughs> we've, we've talked about that. Yes, There's an, a, an issue of the ISKCON Communications Journal coming out next year, specifically dedicated to this theme. How do we, how do we understand the controversial statements? The, the article that I was asked to write was about Hitler. Sometimes... It seemed maybe like Prabhupada said that Hitler was a gentleman or he was a good man. Uh, there's an article about Prabhupada's statement about women. <clears throat> uh, oh. So it's a whole issue coming out next year of the ISKCON Communications Journal dedicated specifically to, to this topic. Oh, okay. That's wonderful. Actually, I love the ISKCON Journal articles and it was such a Loss when for almost a decade we didn't have it, and I think last year they published. No. Uh, this year they published one issue. There's a lot of deep, serious reflection in each article in the journal. Yeah, this. so it's it's been revived. Uh, mostly the credit goes to Mahaprabhu uh, Martin Gurvich, who is a, a devotee from Belgium. At least he has a, a art gallery in Belgium. He he's. Uh, He's put resources into and time and effort to re, re, reviving the ICJ. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I think that's an important topic to discuss. I'm also part of Shastri Karadari Council. We wrote a paper on hermeneutics. And that's also, I think that's a major issue for us to, as a movement to negotiate. And that's a whole different subject. So you could say that Prabhupada, there were some positive perceptions, some negative perceptions. Now, if we move forward, still Prabhupada was substantially successful uh, in taking Krishna Bhakti to, to Americans. And now today we see things have gone down substantially. So now there are, of course, you could say internal ISKCON reasons why that happened. Uh, but Apart from those, you could mention that if you like a little bit, but are there, has there been a change in the perceptions of India, which, uh, which has affect, affected either positively or negatively the receptivity toward India? Uh, from my, uh, from what I said, two things, from what you said, one thing struck me that people are more because of multiculturalism, there is a greater level of openness. So that could be a positive development. And yoga has also become far bigger than what it was at that time. So that could also be seen as a positive development. Mm. Yes, um, of course, we're confronting in ISKCON as an institution what some people have characterized as the Hinduization of ISKCON. Um, and so people get an impression, if they just judge by what they see when they come into a temple, 
it appears to be primarily staffed or appealing to people of uh, 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 Indian extraction. That's the impression because a lot of the people now are from India. Um, again, it's a topic that has a history to it. <clears throat> In the 70s, when we had our strong income coming from book distribution, um, the balance, the demographics were a bit more equalized. After the book distribution went down, uh, there was an influx of money coming from Hindus who would attend ISKCON temple functions as their home away from home because the Devi worship standard is so high, because the prashadam is so tasty, because the festivals are celebrated with such um, care and attention. So there were <clears throat> an increase in the number of uh, Indians attending ISKCON temples. So there, when there were fewer Westerners, fewer people of white skin, and more people of Indian extraction, some people got the impression, well, this must be Indian. So that's an issue, you know, that is raised and discussed. Okay. <clears throat> How to deal with that. Mm, uh, that's a major issue. In one sense, uh, I recently read a book on religion in America, and it seems that uh, what Martin Luther King, Martin yeah, Martin Luther King, he said that the time of uh, like what Saturday 11 o'clock or Sunday 11 o'clock, the time when people go to church, he says, that is the most demographically divided time in America. When people go to their own churches or their own churches of their own particular <laughs> denominations, which could be mm -hmm. regional or ethnic or whatever. So it seems that religion is a place where people come and congregate according to not just their faith, but also their ethnography. So that's the ethnicity rather. So that could also be an issue. If we are primarily an in, we have primarily seen as an Indian movement or a Hindu movement or a movement made of Indians primarily. Well, that was another misimpression that Srila Prabhupada had to rectify. Yeah. That Krishna consciousness is a religion. It's not a religion. Not only is it not Hinduism, it's not any kind of religion. Now, there, it's the nature, it's dharma, it's the, it's the nature of life itself, all right? So that he had to remedy. Now, some yeah. people In a like, just a minute. engage with Krishna consciousness. Okay, go ahead, please go ahead. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, even Krishna now acknowledges in Bhagavad Gita, he says, some people want me to be their worshipable God. If they come to me, they're in distress or whatever. So I'm their God, <laughs> and, and that's fine. It's not going to be particularly attractive to non-Hindus, though. If it's presented in that way, well, this is, you know, a religion that comes from India. Mm. Why was Prabhupada so enthusiastic about the Bhaktivedanta Institute? Why was supporting his scientist disciples the one area where money is given from the BBT did not have to be reimbursed, where that group was to be supported. It's because he wanted to establish that Krishna consciousness is not a religion, it's a science. Therefore, what these PhD devotees are doing is extremely important. So he supported them. He was sending them $10,000 a month from the BBT to pay for the rent and, and the Prashadam and travel and whatever else they needed so they could work full time to establish this rational, objective foundation of bhakti, not as a Hindu religion, not as a religion of any kind, but as the non-material source of life. That was at the heart of his, his whole mission in, in the world was to do that. Thank you.